Well, praise the Lord. Thank you for uh, that wonderful number. Uh, thank you, Brother Jim. As elders also, we sing. Amen. And uh, any which way that we can serve the Lord, uh, let's serve the Lord continually. Well, just say, uh, God bless you to the person beside you, just to wake them up. I know it's a wonderful weather. God bless you. We're happy that you are here. And thank you also to those who help out with our uh, wonderful 23rd anniversary, your greetings and your prayers, well appreciated. And uh, even one month before, if you can lower me down, I have an echo here. I, I was praying to the Lord, Lord, what will be a good uh, uh, message for all of us, including myself. And uh, one thing I was uh, thinking about is about the vision. What is the vision of the church? If you have your sermon bulletin with you, you know the mission statement that we have. We exist to glorify God by building disciples who are what? Who are grounded, who are growing in Christ, who are grounded in God's Word, and who are gearing in the ministry. And I think uh, 2018 will be an exciting year for us, not because uh, me as your servant now is serving with you, but because God is always faithful. Can we get an amen? For 23 years, God has established us together. And I think, uh, let me just start with this, just to uh, wake up some people to be candid with you and then we'll pray. Three people died and went to heaven in the pearly gates. And uh, Peter was there and Peter said, what would you like you to be remembered on earth? Well, one of the ladies who died talking to Peter said, you know what, Peter, I would like to be remembered when I die. And that's why I'm here in heaven now. <laughs> is to remember me as a wonderful mom and a teacher. Peter said, that sounds fair. How about you? Well, this gentleman came to Peter and said, you know what, I want them to remember me at the time of my funeral as a wonderful doctor that I serve my community. And Peter said, that's good too. To the third person, he said, what would you would like to be remembered at the day of your funeral? The gentleman paused for a moment and said, I want them to see and say, He's alive! He's alive! He's still moving! I don't know about you if uh, this is related to Halloween. As Christians, we don't celebrate Halloween. Amen? And I know the Sunday school teachers and the children's ministry are preparing something for Tuesday so that we can have some enjoyment and fun also with our kids. That is a person who is dead now, but still want to be remembered even at the time of his funeral. You see, brothers and sisters, this is what it's all about. We want to be remembered, leaving a legacy of our faith. And this is what I understand as we dive into God's Word in the book of Proverbs, that God would like us to continue on living for His glory. Not because we reach a certain age of our anniversary and we have grown, it never ends there. Don't you know that one of the reasons why we are still alive on earth is because we have a purpose? Our purpose is not just to pay our mortgage and send our kids to college and give them a wonderful family, hopefully. Our purpose really is to give glory to Him, any which way or form. And the book of Proverbs speaks to us with these words, Proverbs 29 verse 18, if you are with me and you have your Bibles, read it with me, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. But happy is he who keeps the law. I like it when the message version said it like this. Listen to this. If people cannot see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what God reveals to them, they are most blessed. Another version in the New Living Translation, which I think Brother Remy opened it with a prayer meeting last time. Listen to the New Living Translation. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. I like that. Because we know for our fact, brothers and sisters, that whatever we are diving in, in our future, only what matters to God is the things that we do for Him. Only one life will soon be passed, but only what's done for Christ will last. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we invite you to sit upon your people, to let your footstool be this place, O Lord. Make it holy. Inviting also the Holy Spirit to teach us wonderful truths. May you be exalted in our gathering, not the preacher, not the speaker. 
Speak to us in a very special way. Touch our hearts. Convict us so that, oh Lord, when we leave this place, we are transformed and we can say we have met with Jesus. Bless our time together. To God be the glory alone. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Most of you know that there is a need for all of us that to define this, we said, vision is the ability to see. It is awareness. I remember Webster Dictionary defined vision as this. It is the faculty of sight, the experience of the supernatural as if it is with eyes. Supernatural. Something that humankind cannot explain. Don't you know that in the Bible, there are many occasions that God has given His vision to His people. And we know for a fact that when they obey, God is honored and God is blessed. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, that God is being developed in churches by the knowledge of the preaching of the Word. Can I say this to you, that great churches, amen, are made up not of great pastors, let me repeat that. Great churches are built up by great members of the body of Christ who surrounds themselves in the work of the Lord. You see, many people believe that pastors grow or churches grow because of the personality of the pastor. And I tell you, it is not. Churches grow because of the personality, are you ready for this? Because of the personality of the Holy Spirit who convicts us and makes us the kind of Christian He wants us to be. Can we get an amen? You see, churches never grows because of a handful of people who are a good high personality or who have charisma with people. I'd rather have the charisma of the Holy Spirit works in us to convert us and to correct us. I understand this, brothers and sisters, that the courage of vision is just like Peter. Remember in Matthew chapter 14, verse 28, you know your Bible, it goes like this. Lord, if it's you, let me walk on the water. Peter had individually have committed himself to the Lord. He stepped out of total faith to God. And don't you know that circumstances that happen our way is one of the ways that God would like us to step out of faith for His glory. I remember that, that people are challenged individually. I like it too when Joshua, remember this? In the book of Joshua, in the conclusion of his wonderful ministry and life and service for the Lord, what did he say? As for me and my house, all together now, we will serve the Lord. If Peter had totally committed for God and said, Lord, if it's you, let me step on the water, Joshua came to the Lord and proclaimed him. Watch this, as a family together. Sabiya, as for me and my wife, we will serve the Lord. And isn't it as parents, we want to serve the Lord together as family? Teenagers, are, if you are here, and kids, if you are here. The greatest desire of any parent is to see their kids serve the Lord. That is the best and foremost things that we need to be doing. It never stops there. When Peter said, Lord, I want to see if I can walk on water, the Lord have showed him. But also with Joshua, he was victorious. Don't you remember that Joshua had defeated not 10, not 20, are you ready for this? 31 kings and kingdoms in the whole book of Joshua. That's why probably Joshua knew for a fact of what will be written in the New Testament with his word. If God is for us, who can be against us? Don't you know, as Christians, we are already victorious by nature if we only knew the promises of God in our lives. And as we go to another passage of the Scripture with this, remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31? If God is for us, who can be against us? Paul had claimed that, you know, if God is with him, there is nothing too hard for him. Now let me proceed by saying this also, that the church should have an, a vision that matters the most to the Lord. Read it to me. Vision for ministry is a revelation. It is a reflection and a requirement of what God wants to accomplish through you to build His kingdom. 
Can I say this to you, brothers and sisters, that we are not building a kingdom of Filipino alliance in this place. We are building the church of the Lord Jesus Christ so that He can get all the glory. All the kingdoms of the world, if you know your church history, all those kingdoms of the Babylonians, of the Assyrian, you know your history. All of them are nothing now. They are gone. They are erased. And I have good news for you. In the book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 15, if you are taking down notes, the Bible said that all these kingdoms, that whatever we are fearing out there, it will be replaced by the kingdom of Christ. And that's what it's all about as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be participators of building God's kingdom. Matthew chapter 6, go with me here in verse 33. Ano sabi niya sa atin doon? Sabi niya, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. What are the things that God will add in our lives? All the things that we worry about, God will replace it with blessing and peace of mind. I don't know about you, but to some of you, you know me by now, I'm a collectible of uh, Starbucks coffee and to some here and there, I, I found a, a cup, a mug that goes like this. Ito yung sabi niya sa mug. Too blessed to be stressed. Oh, sarap uminom sa kape ganun, ano? When you read it, too blessed to be stressed. Whatever it may be. Don't you know that the Bible said that you are blessed indeed from now to eternity? And then why do we worry so much about the future? When Jesus himself died at the cross and said, Tetelestai, it is done, it is finished, I have overcome them already. And by that, brothers and sisters, we can have an encouragement in our hearts. Can you say that to the person beside you? He made you malungkot ngayon. Too blessed to be stressed. Too blessed to be stressed. One more time. Too blessed to be stressed because you are saved already. Because your sins are forgiven. And there is nothing that Satan can tell you that will stop you in serving him. Ayan sabi ni Paul, absent in the body, present with the Lord. If this, this body will die, I am more blessed to be up there in heaven. Kaya when your wife looks at you and says, You don't bring enough money for our mortgage and for our kids and for our baby and for the, our diaper, tell her, We are blessed. Don't be so stressed. Dapat sa'yo, wife, pag tipit-tipit ka sa mga gastos mo. Don't buy unnecessary things. We are definitely blessed. Too blessed to be stressed. Amen? And this is what we understand about God's vision. Proceed it to me with this in your notes. Read it to me as we remember about our mission statement. We exist to glorify God by making what? Disciples who are what? All together now, growing in Christ. Amen? Grounding in God's word and getting up for ministry. Pastor, I've been here before you. I know this. But there's something about a mission statement that some people never really believe on. You see, the vision of God is for all of us to do things. Luke 19.10, to seek and to save that was lost. Can I make a suggestion for you to make our vision more real and stronger than ever? Or even to some of you, to remember it too quickly, I'm going to give you a vision statement of the Filipino Alliance Church. And probably, you're going to tell me, Pastor Alliance, sa ating uh, constitution. So simple. Four words. You ready? The vision statement of any other church out there, and even with our church here, has only had to have four words. Simple, sharp, and true, and biblically sound. I'll go with you in the book of Matthew 22, verse 37 and 39. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So, Pastor, what are you telling us? Our vision statement has to be something like this. Our vision is loving God, loving people. I like that. Simple, four words, easy to understand. Because we don't want to complicate things. I believe that if you ask God what should be the vision and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ in any other church, Matthew 22, verse 37 and 39. Why, brothers and sisters? I kid you not, because Matthew 22 is the greatest commandment of them all. Pastor, I remember the Ten Commandments, Amen. But don't you know that if you dissect the Ten Commandments, 